Minus 10. 10, 9, nine 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition. Full power engines and liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Pace. Helping keep pace with our ever-changing ocean and atmosphere. Stage one propulsion is now full. All nine Merlin engines lit up and roaring. 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Chamber pressures on the telemetry. Power and telemetry nominal. Makes its steep climb into its orbit. And right about two minutes on the first stage. A view from the rocket camera. Beautiful supersonic. Here we hear Falcon 9 supersonic coming up on maximum max Q. Maximum dynamic pressure on the launch vehicle. Max Q. Pass through max Q. The vehicle continues to perform nominally. All nine engines. Firing. MVAC engine chill has started. Starting to chill the second stage engine to get that ready. They bleed a little bit of locks in there so it doesn't uh, get thermal shock once they light it up. A view there, looking down the first stage booster. Getting ready to cut off the engine and separate. We'll have a number of uh, milestones all happening quickly in rapid succession. We're about 10 seconds from main engine cutoff, and then we'll have stage one, two, sep, and then stage two, ignition. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And there it goes. The first stage of the rocket. Second stage now lighting up. Ignition. Stage one boost back startup. You see the glow of the first stage as it falls away. I'm excited to see that first stage come back here to landing zone one uh, this morning. That uh, will be great as stage two continues. Off continues to perform getting that stage back here will be exciting if you're here on the space coast and you're watching get ready for a double thunder clap at just about t plus seven minutes seven to eight minutes the double sonic booms of the first stage booster breaking the sound barrier as it returns to earth stage one boost back shutdown so now the first stage has positioned itself on a return trajectory back here to landing zone one, which is only a mile or so from our location at Hangar AE, we get quite the thunderclap. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, always love to hear the landing zone back here when we're in the hangar. We're, we're about to, uh, 10 seconds away from uh, jettison fairing of the payload fairing, uh, exposing pace to the atmosphere. This is a big moment for the spacecraft team. Fairing separation confirmed. Looking inside, there go the fairings, revealing the Pace spacecraft to the elements. Now Pace will seek to get a signal on the Tidra satellite for our first acquisition of signal. Yeah, this will be a uh, downlink of a, a low-level uh, signal on the Tidra network, uh, utilizing the uh, telemetry network to get verify that PACE is, uh, the transmitter is on, and then they will continue monitoring the spacecraft uh, until separation, uh, and then be able to get their uh, data once they get power positive that we'll see later. And in that moment you just described, that time period that you just described, 
They'll only be monitoring data coming from the PACE satellite. They will not be sending any commands in. Absolutely. Nothing until the spacecraft separates uh, from from uh, the Stage 2. Uh, the spacecraft team will just continue to monitor the health of the spacecraft uh, using the TDRS network. And uh, looking at the telemetry, everything so far on second stage is performing very well. Looks good on our trajectory. They just made a call. Somebody called ASO, but nobody's answered. And there's a shot from the first stage booster as we're coming back down to the Cape. You can see the lights of the Space Coast. It's a pretty shot. I love that shot, Come seeing the coast of Florida come back into uh, view. Two more burns left. Stage one entry burn startup. That's the first one, the entry burn, for about 30 seconds. You see it lighting up now. Grid fins are out to help give it a precision landing, guiding the first stage booster back to landing zone one. Split screen now. Well, we did have it. There's Stage a shot. Two FTS is saved. There's a shot of the booster coming back down from the ground. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage one FTS is saved. All right, and in comes the first stage booster. Second stage continuing on a nominal trajectory. You can probably see us in there somewhere. <laughs> I, lo I love that view at night too, to see the, it'll be, it'll be really nice to see that as it gets closer, uh, the coast of Florida as we come up on landing zone one. Uh, stage two continues to perform nominally stage on a on great, great uh, trajectory for stage two as spacecraft uh, continues to uh, look very well during this flight. Stage one landing burn. All right, there goes the landing burn. In just a few seconds, we'll have a booster on the ground. A look from the ground. We hear the uh, thunder here at uh, We Hangar hear those AE. double claps. Landing leg deploy. There she comes. Stage one landing confirmed. Another pinpoint landing by the first stage booster. Flight number four for the first stage in the books. Second stage continuing to burn on a seven and a half minute direct inject into orbit. This will be a quick ride, Mick. Very quick uh, as the continues to uh, perform very well. Uh, we're looking for this uh, to continue firing and we'll get the uh, second stage cut off at around T plus 10 minutes, but things look very well on the telemetry. Vehicles performing very well and MVAC is uh, nominal. The second stage on a Cape Polar trajectory hasn't been done by NASA in the past 60 years. SpaceX, though, has done it 11 times. This would be the 12th. T plus nine minutes on the count. Just about three minutes left. Actually, check that. Just about a minute left on the stage two burn. There will only be one stage two burn. Yeah, as Jimmy explained to us in the trajectory, this is a direct inject uh, sun synchronous uh, orbit. So just a single burn for the stage two uh, this morning. And uh, things continue to look well. Uh, chamber pressure on MVAC and trajectory look nominal. And then we'll coast for just a few minutes and separate the PACE Observatory. A 
standing by for stage two cutoff, known as Seco One. We'll have that in just a few seconds. Uh, I'm back shut down. All right, there you have it. Now we're going to coast for a few minutes and take a look at the forward-facing camera so we can see the PACE spacecraft, which is being monitored by the spacecraft team. The engine nozzle on stage two still glowing just a bit from a seven and a half minute burn. The all telemetry on stage two looks uh, nominal for the flight. Looks uh, like a very good uh, uh, stage two performance so far. So we'll see how things go uh, as we get ready for spacecraft separation. Now just about one minute away This is a big moment for the PACE spacecraft team, one in which they're holding their breath a bit. There you see PACE now. I love that camera view from the front of the Stage 2, uh, looking at the PACE spacecraft uh, out, there in, out there in that dark space right now. Uh, things are looking really well, and I love, that. love to see that camera view. Dark indeed as they launched into an orbital eclipse. So PACE has no sunlight on it, as you can see. But the hope is once they get those solar arrays deployed, a critical moment, they're going to be looking to get power on it. There goes PACE. Payload separation confirmed. Off into space on its own, flying free. Got applause here at the Mission Directors Center at Hangar AE. Looks like a good separation. Vehicle pretty stable. Yeah, launch vehicle performed very well today and uh, glad to see Pace separated. Uh, we've got a few more milestones that the team will be uh, working on to get uh, Pace to power positive. Hopefully, we can have this view for a bit longer. You see stacked to the right side of the screen. The three lines, those are the solar arrays. It's a three-panel array. And once the guidance and nav navigation control system senses that it's got uh, basically nulled the rates, the spacecraft is stable, it'll start to deploy those solar arrays. And it will be done autonomously. It's dark out there, so we're starting to lose our view. We are now passing the milestone in which we expect the solar rays to be deployed. Again, this is the expected milestone. It's dark out there. Again, no sunlight. 